Hello, hi Kate. Um, so yeah, just to start with, uh, what is uh, what is REMA, the review of electricity market arrangements, uh, and why is it needed? So REMA has has come about uh, by uh, by the very nature of the amount of change that's happening in the energy industry at the moment, but also even more that's going to be happening in the future. The government, through BASE, the department responsible, announced a series of policy reviews over the last couple of years. And the, the most significant one for future energy market design um, is, is REMA. REMA is intended to bring together and, and to really help make fit for the future the electricity network, um, along with some of the mechanisms that incentivize generators, um, people who use energy, um, to make sure all of that is pulling in the same direction. Fundamentally, the move towards decarbonisation is, uh, is changing how electricity is generated, when it's available, how it's available, um, and that that change has started and it's only going to continue in its impact. We also have uh, the question of affordability. Nobody can be unaware of the energy price crisis that's been taking place. People in homes and businesses are struggling to afford their bills. And that's due to a number of factors, but it is very, very closely linked to our dependence on, uh, on gas and fossil fuels and the, the nature of the, the geopolitics that goes behind those markets. So REMA is also intending to, in the longer term, secure affordable energy for everybody. And then extended on from that, we have security of supply. It's really important that we understand that the energy that uh, is, is produced and used within Great Britain, within the British Isles, you know, even though we're an island, we're not an energy island. Energy flows back and forth, whether that's through cables and pipes, through interconnectors, or whether that's the gas that comes to the UK through LNG ships. We aren't operating uh, uh, as, as, as domestic energy users and producers. Energy goes in both directions. But being able to take control by increasing the amount of domestic generation um, uh, and in particular low carbon generation uh, through things like wind turbines, solar farms, that's something that is really, uh, really at the heart of what REMA is trying to achieve. So decarbonisation, security of supply and affordability. Uh, those overarching themes are uh, resulting in uh, a program of review and change um, uh, under the REMA banner. And looking at the energy market, what is within the scope of REMA and what is not included? So, um, uh, non-electricity markets are outside of the scope of REMA to the extent that they don't impact the electricity market. And I think the best example of that is the gas market. So REMA isn't looking to go and intervene in the gas market, although Bayes have made it really clear that the relationship between gas prices and power prices is one that is, is causing a, and exacerbating a lot of the problems that we're seeing today and expect to see in the future. So the gas market itself is not going to be the focus of REMA, but um, uh, it, it will touch upon and it will be, uh, it will be referenced at different points. Things like hydrogen are also outside of the scope of the market, the, the, the carbon market, uh, uh, except to the extent that they are impacting and influencing the electricity, uh, um, uh, the electricity market. Um, those aren't the main focus. Um, I think it's also worth uh, noting that, that the retail market, so the interface between an energy supplier and an energy user, that's not the focus here. REMA's not trying to fix you know, customer service issues um, for, for homes and businesses. There will be a knock-on effect, of course. The way that electricity and the gas market in, uh, in this country is, 
is organised is the supplier is at the heart of the of the relationship that an end user has with the electricity and gas markets. So, uh, so as a as a as a uh, as someone sitting at home, you're not expected to ring up your transmission operator. Um, you're not expected to you know to uh, make inquiries about whether the LNG ship came in today. Your supplier is the is the conduit for all of that information. So. There will be impacts on the retail market. Suppliers, of course, play a critical role in this, but REMA is not focused on the retail market. And I think that's something that's uh, that's worth keeping in mind when looking at the scope of some of these changes um, that are being that are being proposed. And um, there are other things as well that fall outside the scope. Um, probably worth noting that the short term interventions that we're we're seeing explored um, in Parliament, we're seeing them explored um, as a result of recent legislative changes. Um, uh, so things that maybe are impacting the next, you know, one, two or three years. That's not really what Rima's focused on. Some of the language that's being used is very similar. So uh, splitting the market, for example, or um, evolutions of contracts for different CFD schemes. Those are things that are being maybe talked about in the near term and also being talked about as part of REMA. So I think for people involved in these discussions, it's always worth sense checking what period of time you're focused on. It's not helpful if you think if you think you're talking about a change that maybe is it's going to land five years down the line, and the person you're talking to is thinking about it affecting something six months time. So, uh, because some of the the mechanisms that we're talking about are being talked about uh, as short term interventions and solutions, um, it can get a little confusing. But Rima itself is very much focused on uh, making the electricity market fit for the future. We're expecting to see changes from around the middle of the decade onwards um, with, a, uh, with an overall goal of um, significant change by 2030. And this is all with a view to really help facilitate net zero. Some of the targets that the government has are legally binding. Some of them are very clear goals and aspirations. Um, but whatever the actual date, it's clear that decarbonisation needs to happen and it needs to happen rapidly. So again, that's something just to bear in mind that this is the start of a process that could ultimately be quite radical. So it could be a series of changes taking place over consecutive years. This is not necessarily a, a big bang event, one and done. So REMA is very much focused on that medium to long term outlook. And the goal is to make sure the market is fit for purpose in the long term. And based on your conversations with, with market, with, the, with key market participants, is there enough awareness around REMA? Are there any, any topics that are not well understood yet? So there is really good awareness around REMA. I've been involved in market design for well over a decade and I have never seen anything with the cut through that Rima has, has got. Normally it's people like me who get naturally excited about market design and reforms and policy, talking to other people just like me. What we're seeing at very early stages of businesses, we're seeing every single stakeholder across the energy value chain getting involved early. We're also seeing investors. So those uh, those organisations that are going to be driving a lot of this transformation by funding uh, mass low carbon generation technologies, for example, or network upgrades. We're seeing those voices from day one, and that can only help ex expedite some of the discussions that take place. It's no good a section of the industry focusing on problems from their perspective, coming up with a solution, taking up the time and the resource to do so, only to have an adjacent part of the industry point out a fatal flaw, because that's time and energy wasted. So I think there's a lot of fantastic, so many fantastic signs that we're going to get a really good quality outcome, purely because of the amount of stakeholders who have taken the time already to understand what's being proposed and also potentially what the options are that are on the table. I think the area that we keep hearing about is, is the detail. Now, anyone who's read the REMA consultation document from mid 2022 will, will be aware of the sheer scope of the, the, the ideas that are being considered. 
and they themselves have said you know they are at different stages of thinking about different options they some of the ideas are are just that they're the ideas they're not a worked through model and they were they were very clear that they wanted to get this moving due to the urgency and maybe didn't think that it was uh, helpful to to do a full scale model on every single option on the table at this stage because of the amount of time and resource that would take rather they've gone out with a range of ideas credible ideas you know they they're sourced from either uh, models elsewhere in the world or academic research so you know it's not it's not it's not from nowhere but maybe they haven't been modeled in detail of either how they'd work together or how they'd work specific to the gb market but what we find is uh, a very very large number of stakeholders responded to bays um, i think 250 around 250 responses to the initial consultation which i think is unprecedented for this type of ostensibly quite dry work um, we're seeing the feedback and engagement on a commercial level we're having businesses and organizations come to us to, to work with us to develop models for different thinking and different options so they can understand how it might affect them their portfolio um, but also understand the the, the knock-on consequences so we're getting a really wide range of engagement from uh, from across the energy market but also large energy users so we're not at the stage yet where we can say what a likely outcome is. Um, there are a lot of options still on the table, but what we are seeing is very high engagement from across the board, which I personally love to see. And how does Coronal Insight uh, support its clients when it comes to RIM? Um, uh, I, always, I love working with clients because they bring ideas that you've never, you would never have thought of. You know, we, we, you know, we've got a really wide range of experts. We've got modelers, researchers, policy experts, and we we love talking about all of this stuff. But then the second you add another set of priorities and ideas into the mix, whether that's from a, a, a network or a supplier or uh, an industrial and commercial customer, somebody who's, whose business is really dependent on availability, reliability and affordability of gas, electricity, understanding what electrification is going to do to them. It really, really pushes, pushes your thinking. And I love working with the partners that we do. They have um, very good questions. They really understand their industry. And then us being able to help them mitigate risk look for opportunity as well it's not all about um uh, it's not all about you know trying to minimize the bad side there is scope here for influencing outcomes that can really help deliver um you know a, a growing economy for for the whole of the country going forward so i think the work we've been doing um you know under the traditional energy sector work i we're going to carry on doing that and great but the work we're doing with businesses and maybe less core uh, uh, organizations is really interesting to me so i i think the work we've done to date has allowed us to um, to actually take the thinking that we do internally and make it useful for all of these different organizations so they can apply it to their own ways of working um, uh, we've done a range of services. Uh, uh, we've we've written bespoke reports. We've done bespoke analysis. But as well, we take all of this thinking and we put it together into regular roundups. Some of that information through our forums. We also have a website, whatisrema.com. I know is uh, getting a lot of attention as well from people who maybe their organisation is just starting to get to grips with some of the some of these big ideas and they're finding that maybe maybe they know what they're doing maybe they're the energy expert but maybe their board needs upskilling you know and using these resources in a way that works for them so as well as the traditional core energy industry focused work we've also been working with a range of less traditional stakeholders to get them the information that's most useful for them as well at the same time thank you very much